Hello and welcome to Motor Week with a specially extended feature coming to you from Ingolstadt in Germany, the home of Audi. It's a hundred years of Audi we're celebrating in this specially extended feature. We've come here to see what happens if you want to buy a new Audi car. You come here to this huge collection point to buy your new Audi and pick it up. You can also shop at the Audi shop. You can drop the kids off at the Audi kindergarten. You can book a holiday in there and then you can collect your brand new Audi. It might be an A3, it might be a TT, it might be an A4, an A6 or an A8. When you come and arrive here, you look up there, you see your name and your time, you check in, you're shown around the car, shown all the features before you drive out onto the road and home again. Out of the entire historic Audi collection, this is the oldest still in existence from 1902. It's a car which bears the name of its creator on the radiator, August Horsch. Now, Audi came into being 100 years ago, back in 1899, thanks primarily to this chap here, a chap named August Horsch. It was in 1899 that he set up his own car company, but then a few years later decided that he'd had enough of his partners and wanted to set out on his own with his own venture. Now, Horsch was already a registered name, so he couldn't use the name Horsch for his new car company, and instead, a clever idea by his son, who said Horsch translated into Latin means Audi, and so the Audi car company was born, and it's all thanks to this man here. In a former stable, Horsch created his vibrationless engine and designed the car with shaft drive, a real breakthrough for the era, as it was technically complex to do. And this was a, a, the, the birthday of uh, Audi in 1909, so the, the, the fact is that 100 years of Horsch and 90 years of Audi were celebrating this year. Immediately after that, a car was produced with an overhead valve engine. I was probably the first person to position these valves in the middle of the cylinder. This car ran extraordinarily well. It is the car that won the Herkommer trial in 1906. Now perhaps you've wondered what the four rings of Audi signify. Well, so did I until recently when I found out that what it means is the combination of four of Germany's largest automobile manufacturers combining together in 1932. We had DKW, we had Wanderer, we had Audi and Horsch, which all came under that same banner and so created the four rings of Audi that we know today. With the, with the foundation of the Auto Union AG in 1932, where the four brands, Audi, DKW, Wanderer and Horsch came together, they had a, a very good segmentation of these four brands. Uh, DKW was a brand for the, for the smaller cars, for the cheaper cars. Then uh, Wanderer was more uh, a bit sporty, a bit mid-size. Audi was a mid-size into the luxury segment and Horsch in the luxury segment. Now, here's a great did you know fact. Audi was the first manufacturer to build a left-hand drive car with center gear lever. It was years before competitors managed this, and four-wheel brakes was also a first for the company. At the Berlin show in 1926, Horsch unveiled an eight-cylinder car, the first German company to do so. This new product signaled the car maker's venture into the deluxe market segment. Now, although we know Audi today as a luxury car manufacturer, back in the 30s under the auto union gaze, they were a real sports car manufacturer as well. Take this 1939 CD racing car, absolutely stunning. You can imagine them driving this back in the 30s, but just look at how uncomfortable it was for the driver. A very upright driving position, the steering wheel huge and right there in your face, very, very heavy all-round clutch, gearbox and steering, but still immaculate, in perfect working condition too, and this car still goes round shows every year and is still driven. But Audi's sporting heritage is something that they'd really like to get back to, you think. Certainly, they did well at Le Mans this year, 
and who knows what of the future. I'd, I'd like to see the, the race history of Audi uh, like it was in the 30s with the Auto Union Silver Arrows, then with the rally cars and the super touring cars in the late 80s and 90s. And I would like to have these R8s, which started this year first time in Le Mans and made third and fourth place, probably can, con can continue the racing history of Audi. One of the things which is very important to Audi is motorsport. And through the entire Audi history, really going back to the 30s with the Auto Union Grand Prix cars, through the 80s with the Quattro Rally cars, into racing, touring car racing, and more recently Le Mans, motorsport has had a very, very important role to play within Audi. And that's kind of the, the image that we like to develop with the, the Audi product range that we sell in the marketplace. This unique cavalcade from historic to modern shows Audi's design development over the decades. In the late 50s, Audi went through some very tough financial times. It was bought by Daimler-Benz and then sold to Volkswagen, which heralds the start of the modern era. The result was the first four-stroke engine in the first new Audi. The claim of Audi Vorsprung durch Technik uh, is yeah, based probably best in these in this, uh, cars. First begin with the, with the Quattro and then in 1982 with the internally called C3 Audi 100 car with a coefficient of 0 0.30 to, to show to the public that we, we are thinking about uh, uh, reducing consumption and also uh, building up big cars, comfortable cars and techno technology advanced cars. And this was, I think, a very big step in, in terms of technical development. It is strange to be here in the Audi Heritage Museum at Ingolstadt when nearby in the factory 2,000 modern-day Audis are coming off the assembly line each day looking nothing like their ancestors. Modern-day Audis have come so far. It was the A4, the old 80 replacement, which was the big breakthrough. An achievement in style and technology which at last put the mark genuinely into the BMW Mercedes League. This year, the A4 has been upgraded further. Just what are the tweaks? The introduction of the A4 originally was the car that really set Audi on the road to where it is today. And I think without the A4, we couldn't have established the credibility of the entire range with the A3, 4, 6 and 8 and the niche models such as the TT. What was difficult to do was improve on the A4 and the, the recent styling changes are very, very subtle. The bigger changes are really in the engineering of the car, in the suspension settings, the suspension bushes, uh, close up, the panel gaps are actually tightened up so that the structure of the car is, is much, much stronger. Back here at the collection centre in Ingolstadt, Germany, more customers are collecting their brand new TTs, A4s, A6s or A8s. This area of Germany really is Audi land, but in the UK, what sort of image is Audi really going for with the British driver? I think the basic principle is that you know, we, we sum up what we're all about uh, with three words, modern, innovative and individual. Uh, Audi have always made innovative cars. Going back to the, the really early years, in the 30s, the Grand Prix Auto Unions, which was part of the Audi family, had engines behind the driver, which, which was pioneering in, in those days of Grand Prix racing and indeed this is now the, the configuration of all modern Grand Prix cars. Having that technological edge, but always technology which is relevant to the customer, is something that we've had throughout our history, and that's something we'll hang on to very dearly. One of the great joys of being a motoring journalist is that you get to go places where, well, if you were a member of the public, you just wouldn't get to go. For instance, here we are at the Audi Tradition Museum in Ingolstadt. This isn't normally open to the public, 
we're allowed in here today to look at these wonderful cars. But looking is all well and good. Imagine what it would be like to drive something like this on the open road. If only. Audi 920 convertible. It must have been at the time the bee's knees. A six-cylinder engine, 2.5 litres, producing about 70 brake horsepower, would get you to a top speed of around about 70 miles an hour. Now these cars were produced between 1938 and 1940. Of course the war would have affected production greatly and they really are quite fun to drive. Well, what a positively amazing car. It's been a fascinating trip to Ingolstadt here to celebrate 100 years of Audi tradition. It's quite amazing to drive a car like this, which is, after all, 60 years old. And it makes you think that the Audi tradition is something very special. At the time, just before the outbreak of the Second World War, this must have been the absolute bee's knees in automobiles. But of course, without Audi's tradition, cars like that and all the other great cars that we've seen wouldn't have been produced. And cars like this, the stunning TT, also wouldn't have been produced. That car is, well, it's rather difficult to drive for somebody who's not used to the lack of power steering and lack of power brakes and things like this. This car makes you incredibly lazy but I'm driving home in this all the same.